While I usually focus on pro audio equipment on this channel for music production and mixing, I've recently been testing out loads of sports headphones, specifically Bluetooth bone conduction headphones that allow you to hear your music and the world around you at the same time. Now I've put myself and the headphones to the test in this video because I wanted to find out if they were actually a good option for people that want to listen to maybe music, audiobooks, podcasts, while you're cycling, running, working out, or just simply out and about in the world and you don't want to block yourself off, you want to be able to hear everything around you. As usual, I've got a bunch of chapters and timestamps, so you can navigate to the bit of the video that interests you the most. But firstly, I want to thank Sunto for making this video possible. I've used their sports watches in the past, so it was great to team up with them. They've kindly sent me a couple of pairs of their Wing and Sonic bone conduction headphones so that I could make a video all about bone conduction technology and really push them to the limits without having to go and buy a bunch of pairs to test myself. And as always on this channel, I have full control over the video so I can share the good, bad, and anything in between. But if you are interested in trying any of these headphones, there are some discount links in the description down below. All of the information you need is in there as always. Now these sorts of headphones are packed full of features, functions, and technology, and we're going to talk about the build quality, sound profile, all of that stuff in just a moment. But if you're anything like me, when you first see these headphones, you're thinking, what on earth is bone conduction, and how does it work? By far the easiest way to describe this is to spend 30 seconds explaining how your hearing normally works, and then where bone conduction comes into it. So if I just zoom in here, Oh, nope, zoom in, not zoom out. <laughs> this is a little bit low tech, but honestly, this is the best way to describe it. This is a diagram of the ear. It's not to scale, it's very large. Uh, with normal hearing, what you've got is you either have a loudspeaker that sends sound waves towards your ear, or you have some sort of headphone or earplug that blocks the ear and sends the vibrations down your ear canal. But whichever way it is, we're talking about sound waves and vibrations traveling through the air and eventually ending up on your eardrum here and then the structures in the middle ear transmit these vibrations from the eardrum to the inner ear or the cochlea. This is an incredible structure, and among other things, it's lined with thousands of tiny little hairs that detect all the different frequencies and amplitudes, and then send all of that information as little nerve impulses to your brain, which ultimately figures out what you're actually hearing and what you're listening to. So with bone conduction, what you do is instead of vibrating a speaker or a membrane to create sound waves in the air, what you do is you just vibrate a transducer, and in this case it's backed with some soft silicon, so it's nice and comfortable. And you place this right in front of the ear here. So this transducer vibrates on your temporal bone and sends these vibrations directly to the inner ear. Now this distance isn't actually that far, this diagram's massive. This means you can listen to music, podcasts, audiobooks, while your normal system of hearing is completely open, and you're not plugging your ear, causing any buildup of heat, sweat, or pressure. While the main mode of function is this vibration, some models, like the Sonic here, which is actually my favourite one, have a little sort of bass port or an additional speaker, which can also help balance out the sound and have a little bit of that air conduction as well as the bone conduction. Blending those two can give you a little bit of a better tonal balance, but we'll talk about the sound quality in just a minute. So that's the theory at least, but of course I've been putting them to the test, uh, cycling and running over the last couple of months. Now I'm going to talk about all the features and functions of the headphones, but by far the most important thing is just what do they actually sound like. First thing about the sound is that they have to fit well. So the better those transducers make contact with your cheekbones, or your sort of temporal bones, the skin there, the better they're going to sound. Which is why for me, I found that the Sonics actually sound better on my head, even though the wing is technically their flagship model. Now for all the details about the sound profile, we're going to jump back into the studio, because it sounds a little bit better in there. So the first thing I notice when I put these on my head is that while you can hear everything clearly, the sound profile is definitely mid and treble focused. So if you have another pair of headphones or sort of speakers that display the full frequency balance, bass, mid and treble, it might sound a little bit like this. With these headphones, it's gonna sound like you've just scooped everything below about 300 hertz. So it just sounds a little bit thinner in the bass. And initially I was listening to this and I thought maybe a little bit let down by this until I got outside and I didn't miss it at all, which is really odd because anyone that knows me will know that I really like bass heavy systems. 
Uh, that's just the kind of music I like. When I was outside with these, you realize having a little bit less of that bass is also what gives you that amazing spatial awareness. You can hear you know, a rumbling of a car behind you, anything like that. What you do hear perfectly though are vocals, synths, guitars, keys, percussion, drums. All of that stuff is gonna be reproduced with a lot of clarity in the mid and the treble. And when it comes to the sound stage or profile, it almost sounds as though there's a little bit of stereo widening on it. So you get a very clear left, right, center channel. They don't sound like they're inside your head. It almost sounds like I have two small speakers just in front of me, um, although I know that's just psychoacoustics. So it sounds almost as though you're listening to a mix and there's a little bit of stereo widening on. Now there's loads of different sports headphones available. So the question would be, why would you choose a bone conduction headphone over some of the other options like in-ear buds? Now I can think of three or four good reasons and I'll sort of run them through here. Now the first one, and I've also I've sort of alluded to this already, it's the spatial awareness. So just being able to hear everything around you and your surroundings. So not only does that make sense from a safety perspective and being able to hear cars, traffic, it's just nice to actually be able to hear your surroundings. It feels like there's a bit of a soundtrack to your life while you're maybe working out or out exploring. And I know there are other headphones that do allow some audio pass through, you know, such as AirPods, and I've got those, I've tested them extensively. The issue with those is that they don't really let you know where the sound's coming from. They just use microphones on the outside and pass the sound to your ear, but they don't really differentiate between say a car that's a hundred meters behind you, a motorcycle 50 foot to the left, a dog running on the path to your right, another runner trying to pass you, you know, heaven forbid that happens, you don't really feel like you're actually spatially aware of everything around you. Whereas with bo any bone conduction headphones, you can easily distinguish between exactly where the sounds are coming from. Even whilst I've been filming this, there's been plenty of occasions where I hear a car coming up and I can go put the camera away and let it pass safely. Cause you, you don't really want to be filming like this or, or plugging your ears and listening to music locked off if you're on, you know, public highways or roads or whatever. Now the next reason is also ear fatigue and just ear health in general. The ear canal is completely open, so there's no buildup of heat, sweat or pressure. When I use in-ear buds, uh, I can't stand them for more than about an hour, maybe two at most, and then I, my ears feel incredibly fatigued and tired. And you know, being an audio engineer, sound engineer, I'm listening to music all day, so the last thing I want to do is uh, you know, go out, exercise or exploring, and then just plug my ears up for, e for any longer than I need to. With the bone conduction, I've tested these for at most four and a half hours with no ear fatigue, which is just uh, pretty uh, amazing for me at least. My ears don't have a high tolerance for sound, believe it or not. After an hour or two, I just, uh, I just wanna pull those headphones out. So with these at least four and a half hours going strong and uh, everything's still sounding good. Closely linked to the lack of ear fatigue, the next benefit is simply the fit. When you put these on your head, they're just simply not going anywhere and I don't have any luck with normal earbuds, even good ones like AirPods, no matter which uh, buds I put on them, they just always fall out of my ears. My ears are pretty uh, soft, like the cartilage is all super easy to move around. Maybe that helps my hearing, but unfortunately normal headphones, they just come out. So I need over ear headphones. And of course, when you're working out with those, they get super sweaty. These ones, they have a uh, sort of silicon which is grippy all the way around, so they don't need to clamp on with a lot of force. Although they do have this really strong titanium band that kind of holds them together and keeps them tough. What you do is uh, when they're on, they don't have a whole lot of clamping force because they just don't need it. The shape sits next to your bones here. The silicon grips it in place and I'm not gonna do it on camera, but you can head bang with these. You can throw your head side to side. They're not going anywhere. And once they're on, after a few minutes, I just forget that they're there. There's been so many times where I've taken my helmet off after cycling and these just go flying across the room with them. It's just really bad, but they haven't broken yet. So not only are they pretty water resistant, but they're also clearly pretty durable. They also don't seem to interfere with any of the different sunglasses or helmets that I've got. So I tried them on with a few pairs of sunglasses and uh, it doesn't seem to push the pads or anything out of position. So there's no worries there either. So that's an overview of bone conduction in general. And I think after all of that, you can see that I'm pretty sold on the technology. But what I want to do is spend a few minutes talking about the different features of these Sunto models, the Wing and the Sonic, just so that we can do a little bit of a comparison of the features. And you can also see some of the more interesting things you can achieve with this sort of technology. So there's two models, the flagship wing that comes in red and black for 169 pounds and the Sonic, which comes in black and lime green for 129 pounds. Both of them have 10 hours of playback. I tested this as best as I could on the bike. I went out for four hours and the battery went from 100% to 61%. So that's about 10% every hour. So I figure 
that's going to last the full 10 hours. Both of them can be recharged using this magnetic connection, and I think they use this instead of, say, a USB-C, just to try and increase the waterproof rating. The Sonic is IP55, and the Wing is IP67 rated, so it's pretty rugged and waterproof. Living in the Highlands of Scotland in summer, I've obviously had the chance to see if these still sound good when I'm absolutely drenched through. Welcome to June in Scotland. I've tested them in the rain, and they were solid no change to the sound quality, and if anything, when you're listening to music in the rain like that, it sounds pretty epic. And a little bit more about the charging. The Wing also comes with this portable power bank that allows you to recharge it twice or another 20 hours of playback, and this just sort of snaps in. I'll get some B-roll of this so you can see it up close. This is also like, really lightweight, so you could easily just like put this in the front bag of a bike or in your gym bag or something, just to make sure that you've always got charge. Importantly though, this charging bank does not work with the Sonic. It doesn't fit in there, as far as I'm aware. I've, I've actually tried to put it in there, probably shouldn't have. It's made specifically just for the Wing. Both of them have microphones so that you can make calls when you're out and about. The Wing is slightly better. It has wind cancellation up to 30 kilometers an hour. The Sonic has up to 15 kilometers an hour. Both of those are fine if you're running. If you're running faster than 15 kilometers an hour, you're doing very well. But the Wing is probably gonna make better calls if you're out cycling, but I don't really make calls. When I go cycling, I sort of get out there to escape the rest of the world, to be honest. Both of those microphones are okay, but they're not the standout features on these headphones. Both of them have volume, power, and multifunction buttons, so you can pause, play, skip songs, just like any good headphone. And the Wing also allows you to use head movement and gestures so that you can skip songs, answer or reject calls just by shaking your head. The Wing also has these lights to attract attention or simply improve your safety and visibility if you use them at night or in low light conditions. This feature, along with a whole host of others, can be controlled in the Sunto app, where you can see the battery status, sound modes, and more. Although, importantly, you don't need to download that app to use these headphones. I know that's something that bothers people. The app just lets you see the battery percentage and really sort of get the most out of them. Like I said earlier, I've used the Sonics for about 40 hours. I've used the Wing for a little bit less than that, and I haven't managed to break, bend, discolor, cut, uh, break them in any way. Like I said, I'm kind of leaning towards the Sonics. I like those, so I've got a little bit more time on them. So to summarize my sort of thoughts about this, not only am I fascinated by the technology behind bone conduction headphones, I'm sorry that I've said that so many times in this video, bone conduction headphones, but I think they're a totally viable solution for listening to music, podcasts, audiobooks, or even sort of relaxing and sort of zen uh, sounds when you're out in nature, if that's the sort of thing you want to do. Particularly for me, I don't listen to music when I'm out and about because I, I need to hear the world around me. I need that situational awareness. So if you're like that and you don't want to block the world out, this just makes perfect sense. The soundstage and profile is just unlike any other headphones or speaker systems I've tried. They really are in their own category, although for pure sound quality, I'd probably want to listen on something else like this system but I can't take that out cycling with me or walking or running. If you get the fit right, I think they sound good, but I think you're also gonna have to try that for yourself. So that's about it for this video, but I wanna thank Sunto again for providing the headphones and really letting me put them through their paces. You can probably tell I've had an awful lot of fun making this video. It's a bit different for this channel. Uh, so thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.